Welcome to episode 5 of module 5 heredity. We're moving into inquiry question 4. How can the genetic similarities and differences within and between species be compared? Our syllabus reference for this video will model the formation of new combinations of genotypes produced during meiosis, including autosomal, sex linkage, codominance, incomplete dominance and multiple alleles by interpreting information and data from pedigrees and Punnett squares. Our learning intentions for the video will define key terms used in genetic variation, interpret autosomal sex-linked codominance, incomplete dominance and multiple allele Punnett squares, and interpret pedigree charts. Let's first look at some keywords. We've previously learned that a gene is a section of DNA. An allele is a variation of a gene. For example, if there is a gene for eye colour, the possible alleles are brown eyes, green eyes, or blue eyes. A dominant trait refers to one that occurs more often in a population, whereas a recessive trait occurs least often in a population. The genotype refers to the genetic makeup of the organism, whereas the phenotype is a physically observed and expressed trait of an organism. A heterozygous organism may have two different alleles, and a homozygous may have two of the same alleles. Autosomal traits relate to chromosomes 1 to 44, and sex-linked relate to the sex chromosomes 45 and 46. Multiple alleles are more than two alleles for a particular trait. Codominance is when two dominant alleles are expressed equally, and incomplete dominance is when two alleles are blended when expressed. A Punnett square is a square diagram that is used to predict the genotypes and the possible phenotypes of a particular cross or breeding experiment. Autosomal Punnett squares are probably the most common type you have seen before. Dominant traits are represented by an uppercase letter and recessive traits are represented by a lowercase letter. It's important that the same letter is used. It's also good to use letters that have distinct upper and lower case letters like A or B. Letters like W or U can often be difficult to distinguish between the upper and lower case. In the example of the coloured peas, we can see that the green peas are recessive, represented by the lower case Y, and yellow peas are dominant, represented by the upper case Y. In this example, we have a homozygous green recessive pea cross with a heterozygous yellow pea. When the Punnett square is complete, the genotype, which shows the genetic makeup, shows two heterozygous Y to two hom homozygous recessive Y. The phenotype is a physical expression. In this case, we have two yellow and two green. It is important to note that one uppercase letter means the phenotype will express the dominant trait. You can also write the genotype as either a ratio or as a percentage. Sex-linked or X-linked Punnett squares involve the X chromosome. Males represent XY and females represent XX. When constructing X-linked Punnett squares, we must use Xs and Ys. Alleles are represented as superscripts and the upper and lower case letters still apply. If X-linked Punnett squares, males can either be affected or unaffected. However, females can be affected, carriers, or unaffected. If a female is a carrier, she will not phenotypically express the trait, but carry the allele. For this example, we will use haemophilia. Haemophilia is a recessive trait carried on the X chromosome that affects the clotting of the blood. Having two recessive alleles means a person will express haemophilia. In the ex example, we have a male with haemophilia and a female who does not. The phenotype expressed shows that one male and one female are affected, there is a carrier female and an unaffected male. Codominance means that two alleles are expressed equally, meaning they are both dominant. An example of this is human blood type. Both blood type A and B are dominant, which is why a person can express blood type AB. When constructing Punnett squares that are codominant, Two uppercase letters are used to represent each dominant allele. In the example, we have codominance in coat colours in cattle. 
both white and red coat colour are dominant and equally expressed. When a homozygous white cattle mates with a homozygous red cattle, all offspring will be a mixture of both. This is called roan colour. Codominant characteristics can be observed as speckles, spots or stripes in an animal. Incomplete dominance is the blending of two alleles. The classic example often used is the red and white snapdragon flower. Red snapdragon flowers are dominant over white snapdragon flowers. When a homozygous red is crossed with a homozygous white, all offspring will produce the blended colour, in this case pink. It's important to know that the uppercase letter still represents the dominant trait and the lowercase represents the recessive. The heterozygous offspring will reflect the blended colour. And lastly, multiple alleles. As we have learned, alleles are the variations of genes. In the case of multiple alleles, this means there are more than two possible alleles for a particular trait. The most common example is fur colour in rabbits and blood type in humans. In human blood type, there are three possible alleles, A, B and O. As mentioned in the codominance Punnett squares, both A and B are codominant and can be expressed equally as AB blood type. O blood type is recessive. When constructing Punnett squares for multiple alleles, we use the letter I. A superscript for A and B are used to denote these blood types and a lowercase i represents blood type O. In this ex example, we have a person with blood type A crossed with a person with blood type O. The resulting genotype is 50% of the offspring with blood type A and 50% with blood type B. Phenotypically, they will express the dominant blood type but carry the recessive O blood type. Moving into pedigree chart. A pedigree chart is a visual representation of a family's genetic history, showing the relationships between individuals and indicating the inheritance of traits or genetic conditions over generations. The unshaded squares represent unaffected males, while shaded squares represent affected males. Unshaded circles represent unaffected females, while shaded circles represent affected females. Generations are represented by Roman numerals. The older generation is at the top and the younger generation is at the bottom. For each generation, numbers are given to individuals. This helps keep track of patterns of inheritance more easily. Many pedigree charts include a key or a legend that explains the meaning of different symbols, colours or patterns used in the chart. This helps interpret the information more accurately. As previously learned, dominant traits are the ones that occur more often in a population. When interpreting a pedigree chart, it is evident if a trait is dominant if there are more affected than unaffected individuals. The following example is of Huntington's disease an autosomal dominant disorder that affects the nervous system. Having one dominant allele means a person will express Huntington's sometime in their life. The uppercase H represents a person with Huntington's and a lowercase h represents a person unaffected. When two heterozygous for Huntington's cross, the resulting offspring show a 3 to 1 ratio of affected versus unaffected. When interpreting a pedigree chart that is autosomal recessive, the trait will occur less often or may even skip a generation. This is how students are able to make the clear difference between dominant and recessive pedigree. In the example of cystic fibrosis, two heterozygous offspring have a one in four chance of producing a child with cystic fibrosis. Sex-linked or X-linked pedigree charts can often be difficult to distinguish between autosomal pedigree charts However, there are some key differences that can help students. Affected fathers will pass on the X-linked trait to the daughter or daughters, but not to the son or sons. The affected mother will pass on the X-linked trait to both her daughter or daughters and son or sons. If the father is affected, all of his daughters will be affected. Also, the affected father's mother will be affected. 
Generally, the trait will be expressed by females more often than in males. An example of this is Fragile X syndrome. Only one copy of the dominant gene is required for a female to be affected. In X-linked or sex-linked recessive pedigree charts, there is some key difference from autosomal recessive pedigree charts that can help students distinguish between them. In general, the trait will be expressed by males more often than females. The affected mother will pass on the X-linked trait to both her daughter and son. If the mother is affected, the son will also be affected, regardless of the father being affected or not. Also, the affected mother's father will be affected too. If the mother is a carrier, meaning she's unaffected, and the father is unaffected, then the male offspring will have a 50% chance to be affected and the daughters will not be affected. A classic example of this is colour blindness, where two recessive copies of the allele need to be present for a person to be affected by colour blindness. And that is the end of episode five. Thank you for watching.